I'm like kind of tired, not gonna lie. According to Dr. Huberman, the research shows that viewing early morning sunlight during our active portion of the day signals the melatonin hormones to start their 12 hour time clock, which will then be released towards the end half of the day. At this point, there are like a million of these videos, so I'm sure you've heard of this quite a bit. According to Wams et al. 2018, quality and architecture of your sleep is associated with preceding light exposure. Sources in the description. It was found that exposure to direct sunlight between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. for five days seems to be effective, increasing the global sleep quality index. In fact, when people are put in natural light contacts, young teenagers or college students going off into a camping, no artificial light around. Apparently, within one week, they all had their insomnia and their sleep disturbances completely cured, all because of light changes. Isn't that kind of amazing? In the morning, he does his hydration thing as well. Basically, what I do is put salt, lemon, and I chug that thing up. In the winter months of NYC, I don't really bother with this, but in the summer, man, does it get really hot. And I really do think it helps replenish your electrolyte and salt level, especially if you fast. In the morning, I prefer doing breathing exercises, such as this, or sitting meditation which I made a whole video about right here. I also use the Waking Up app. Human does something called Yoga Nidra, which is basically just a form of body scan exercise, and studies have shown that it actually helps reduce insomnia as well. The thing is, I've done some variation of Huberman's routine since about 2021. So my goal here is to show you that there's many different structures that you could apply while maintaining this routine. If you understand the why, then it's really easy to figure out your own routine. And that's way more helpful, in my opinion, than following something exactly. I love Huberman, and he's one of my heroes heroes and idol, but I want to be the best version of myself, not necessarily be exactly like him. The great thing about Huberman is that he's constantly learning and incorporating other people's routine into his daily habits as well. He's constantly learning. So the best way to actually follow his routine is to also update your own routine whenever you learn something new. He delays caffeine like one hour post waking up. I typically wait like a couple more hours. So I'm gonna go to the gym. Now, I'm about to head to the gym and do some strength training routine. Huberman really likes his Zone 2 cardio, just like Peter Atia talks about. He has about 220 minutes of it a week. Zone 2 is like this version of cardio that's like slightly uncomfortable, pretty really hard to talk, but you can still breathe through your nose. So it's very low intensity. It's really hard to dedicate that much time just to the gym. I walk like 30 minutes to the gym and I come back 30 minutes, like really, really fast. I count that as part of my zone training, but it's probably closer to Zone 1. Let's get my Zone 2 in. It's probably closer to Zone 1. That's why I kind of walk fast. Some ways you could make it more zone two is probably by carrying a heavy bag. This is called rucking. There are other products that you could use, but I just use my backpack with decent amount of load, not too much load though. And because it's probably closer to zone one, two days out of the week, I reserve at least 25 minutes into doing stationary bike work, or I run for about 25 minutes. And there are other ways to get zone two cardio as well. Human's routine is mostly weight training combined with a lot of steady state cardio, but I actually do a lot of gymnastics training combined with more explosive sprints and jumps. Strength training is a really big deal for me because it helps me learn movements and keeps me injury free. I'm actually still recovering from having a car accident. So a lot of my routines are still about prehabbing or rehabbing certain parts, especially my upper scapula. On the basic level though, I think Huberman and I train in a very similar way anyway. I just happen to have different goals. Here I'm doing Nordic curls for three to five sets of five reps. These are really, really hard. It's a lot harder than it looks, but it also helps me a lot with jumping and running. In between the sets, I do tib raises for about 20 reps. These are also pretty good for protecting my feet and my knees. Then I also do knees over toes Ben Patrick edition ATG split squats for about five sets. And towards the end, I do about three sets of good morning pancakes, which is basically a way of me keeping my mobility and staying strong at the end range of the motion. Like I said, I love dancing and in dancing, having this level of flexibility really helps you learn different movements. I then walk back about 30 minutes. All of this usually covers my daily steps and neat movement very well. What are neat movements? According to Levine et al. 2002, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT, is the energy expended for everything that we do that is not sleeping, eating, or sports-like exercise. It ranges from energy expended, walking to work, typing, performing yard work, undertaking agricultural tasks, and fidgeting. Levine 2002. This type of work apparently burns thousands of calories, which is insane. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. It's time for a cold shower and then I'm eating, man. I know sometimes Huberman breaks his fast at like 1, but from what I've seen in his videos, he says 11, so 
I can't wait, man. Huberman generally recommends getting about 11 minutes of cold exposure a week. He does a cold plunge, but I don't have a cold plunge machine. This video is supposed to be in a cheap budget, but I do is cold showers. Now, cold showers are a lot more easier than a cold plunge. Usually, as per Andy Gelfin, one of the best exercise communicators around, it is usually a better idea to do a cold plunge before you work out. Cold blunts the hypertrophy and possibly strength gain that come from exercise. However, it does help with endurance gains and injury prevention. That being said though, I do it after a workout just because cold showers don't have nearly the same effect as cold plunges. Plus, I don't want to smell like stinky poo after working out. By this time, I'm hungry as hell. Basically, I haven't eaten in like 15, 16 hours at this point, And I worked out a ton and I walked around a ton. I got to be very careful how I break this fast. Because if I start with something that's more like refined carbohydrates or chocolates, I'll straight up eat so much that I'll black out. So, what I do to mitigate this is try Tim Ferriss' recommendation of eating at least 30 plus grams of protein or a high fiber food as my first source of food. The first thing I eat is I make this Greek yogurt concoction with some nuts Damn. and some berries. It tastes really great and more importantly, it feels so stable. Like it doesn't like make me crave more food. While I eat, I also make sure to not look at my phone. I feel like I enjoy food more when I do this. More importantly, I prevent what's called dopamine stacking. This way, I honestly feel like I enjoy life more. <laughs> then I'll also make a quick smoothie. I add some greens, a scoop of unflavored protein powder, yuck, some banana, this time I use mango, and creatine. I don't have the AG1, please sponsor me. And I'm really broke, so these greens are basically my replacement. Okay, I finished eating now, and this is when you're supposed to do like deep work. Mm, yeah, so I'm about to do some deep shit. I think Huberman does tend to get one cycle of focus work in before he breaks his fast or works out. In this two to three hours of deep work session, I'll write scripts for other videos, I'll edit, send out some job applications, I'll write essays. More importantly, what I do here is I research things. I love researching things. I love looking at science papers. I love looking at new concepts and trying to understand them. I'm currently unemployed, so having this time is an absolute privilege for me. Adding this in has basically made me like 40 times smarter I feel like. While working it really is hard to block off time like this. So if you have this time, oh my god, thank the heavens and the lord because you could get so much more done. I read Cal Newport's book Deep Work and he talked about this exact same concept. Blocking off 2-3 to three hours of your time, especially in the earlier half of the day, can allow you to do work so much quicker and faster and deeper than doing like 8 hours of work from 9 to 5. And I hope I could live a life even once I get a job I could keep doing this. <laughs> but that being said though, my deep work session got undercut by this. You hear this? Blasting lawn, man. New York City. New York City. I had to cut short my deep work session by about like four minutes, but I think I got a decent amount of done and I'm happy with it. I do want to start moving this earlier in the day though. Actually, I also read Dr. K story about how when he was in medical school, he would start his day at five and do two hours of studying before anyone else. This alone was enough for him to absolutely blow med school out of the water. And this is all he studied, just two hours a day. And that's kind of incredible when you think about it. Believe me when I say that when you do something like that, there's so much pleasure and joy that comes out of it. It's hard to explain. It doesn't feel like you're giving up. Something. It really does feel like you're getting a depth of work that's not possible any other time. Uh, I just woke up from a nap. Uh, I mean, uh, yoga nidra non-sleep deep rest. slight inconvenience as i was making this video bathroom sink started leaking so now that's being fixed i'm sure huberman lab also gets leaky toilets and stuff so you know <laughs> improvise this is what i meant like these things will happen no one's ever gonna have a perfectly set routine i think rolling with things and adapting accordingly is probably the mark of a great routine in my opinion uh, overnight's oats i made in the morning well i'm gonna put some flax sheets some cacao powder some coconut milk a little bit of honey and I'm gonna munch that thing down. Around this time, I also eat a little bit of eggs. Today, it was fish in honor of Dr. Huberman. It really does depend on how bougie I feel though. And that fish was, of course, salmon. Huberman Lab recommends adding EPA to your diet for sure. 100% for sure. That's why I eat things like salmon, eggs, hemp seed, flax seeds, chia seeds, all those things that have some form of EPA in them. According to Deal et al. 2015, omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, exhibit neuroprotective properties and represent a potential treatment for a variety of neurodegenerative and neurological disorders. It basically protects against extreme diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, even some forms of cancer. According to Dr. Human, it also curbs your desire for eating sugar. I actually just read through a paper that said that 
eating omega 3s actually offsets side effects of depression medication like SSRIs. Namara et al. 2014 wrote preliminary findings demonstrate that adolescents with SSRI resistant depression exhibit robust DHA deficiency. Okay, so the bathroom is finished now, and now it's time for me to do the second bout of work. Do this for another 90 minutes. Ultrarian cycle? Yeah ultrarian cycle this time i do a lot less writing and creative work and i do a lot more of uh, busy work like email repetitive job applications even editing some things sometimes i even read or watch podcasts during this time but i make sure it's active which means like i take notes or i pause the audio and ask myself what i learned it really does depend on the day. I am typically a little bit more distracted at this time of the day though. But that being said though, doing those two bouts of work basically lets me have about three to four hours of deep work sessions a day. Because I eat as a high fiber and protein diet, I don't normally snack all that much, but I do get hungry once in a while and Huberman likes to use macadamia nuts and things like that. I think macadamia nuts are kind of expensive. If I get hungry, what I do is either I eat things like eggs or more sour fruits like kiwis and green apples. I also eat things like kimchi or more fermented food, drink a little bit of kombucha maybe. These foods, don't tend to be hyper palatable so i hardly ever overeat them around five or six would that fail i almost always dance for at least one hour i will learn new routines or i'll practice the old one and do things like ballet i'll also do more stretching and mobility drills around this time this also can be a form of zone two training in my opinion it's almost evening time sunset time and you know human says to go get sunset to like offset light stuff um and the lighting is so good here though Mm. It's like there's evidence for morning sunlight. There's also evidence that evening sunlight viewing actually offsets the blue light effects on your biological systems. All they at all 2019. At this point around 7, I'm usually physically exhausted by the time I come back. So he does this heat therapy a couple times a week and apparently it helps a lot with growth hormone release. But during the summer in New York City, while well, it's like 87 degrees in a top floor apartment with a burning ceiling and no AC on, this is really, really hard to do. Basically what I do is I turn the shower on in full heat I close all the windows and doors, put on a thick winter jacket, and I just sweat it out. And it really, really sucks. Dripping in sweat, your jacket is drenched. I don't do this often. Plus, I feel like I'm wasting so much water. <laughs> don't try that home, bro. For Huberman. Then, I go outside and I dry off for a little bit. Still around evening time. And man, that evening breeze after that heat feels so good. Look at me. I'm having a blast. I'm just chilling. Straight chilling chilling like a villain like around this time after all this i eat dinner it's usually about eight i still eat about 30 grams of protein either to things like tofu or beans or chicken or fish whatever it might be it's a smaller meal for sure having a smaller calorie density meal around this time i feel like really helps me sleep better eating a bulk of your calories to the earlier half of your day is much more helpful in setting your circadian clock because i've done so much of my work by this point i have a lot of time to goof around and just have fun. I just watch a lot of YouTube videos, everything from Sidemen to more human lab videos, anything fun really. At around 10 p.m., I shut off all my overhead lighting, just like human says to do. Go to bed by around 11. I'll have another one hour to just fool around. I'm very chill at this time. I'm just super zen. Then right before bed or so, I basically read for like 20-30 minutes in my Kindle. By the time I go to bed, I sleep like a baby. In all honesty though, this routine is actually much more simpler than it might seem. That might be because I've done a version of this for so long. It made my life so much more meaningful and productive. I do not recommend doing everything in this routine all at once. Add one thing, one variable at a time and see if that's beneficial for you. The routine is made purposefully very broad so that it's very flexible for everyone. There are some concepts though that will make your life so much more easier. Some form of exercise practice, sunrise, eating decently, and doing some work really all it is the key is to be able to make this consistent thank you so much for watching this was a lot more simpler but also a much more fun video for me to make i love talking about science and i love research i listed all the references that i used below hope you guys find this really helpful like comment subscribe peace